for Saturday sculpture. We're going to do this one a bit different and we are going live. I was about to go on at 11, a little bit late, but I hope you'll forgive me. So hopefully uh, you will join me throughout the course of today where you'll see the different stages of my sculptures. You've got an opportunity to interact with me, ask questions or just hang out. But I appreciate every minute that you choose to spend with me and I hope that you enjoy this process. I will talk you through the materials I've got now. So the resin we are using today is Shearcraft. So I purchased this from Amazon myself. <laughs> today is going to be real time. Yes, it is. So this is Shearcraft Premium Epoxy and it's a one part AB. I don't know what the premium means to be honest. I've not used this resin before when it comes to sculpture. So I have no idea. Hello on the, cl the clock on the wall, my lovely. Hello. <laughs> now, I don't know what I've done because Paula's messages are not coming up on my iPad, but they are on the phone. So Paula, if I do miss your chat, apologies. I think when I was blocking um harvey the other week i must have done something to your name which is really strange because on my phone it works but on my ipad not so much anyway i showed you the resin we're going to be using the only thing i don't know about this resin is how it's going to respond and what i mean by that is is my wait time four hours is it three hours is it five hours and that's something that we'll explore today the paper i'm using i'm quite excited to use this it's a bit different this one is from amazon i got it i'm sure you can purchase it directly from the supplier and it's got this beautiful brocade imprint on that now the reason i want to use it is to see if it's going to leave the pattern in the resin uh, and then does that add value to the sculptures there's the most tiniest little bit of iridescent on there not a lot so i've not really brought um i've not really bought this or using this one no, I'm not sure either, Paula. <laughs> Hello, Audrey. Um, but there is a little shine in there. But I'm going to see what value, if any, does that print um, provide. At the end of this live, I will put links to it. But it is from uh, Amazon. And I'm sure you can buy it from anywhere else. What else is exciting? Well, I've leveled my board. That's not necessarily exciting. The bling I'm going to be using... I'm not too sure if I'm just going to use my standard white ones, the smaller ones, or if I'm going to go for these iridescent ones. Hello, Tia. Welcome. Uh, or mix it up. The only thing I don't like about these iridescent ones is they're quite big and chunky. And, and I, I don't want it to look out of place or tacky, but it might add value to the sculpture. So what I'm going to do is wait and see what I'm feeling at the end of it. Oh, thank you, Paula, for asking people. What side of the paper I'm using? I'm using the one where you can feel the pattern. So it's probably reversed to where it should be. So facing up is where you can feel the pattern. And that's why I'm hoping that it will release from the resin, but it should leave that imprint. It might not. And then, you know, Saturday, Saturday sculpture shenanigans. Uh, we will see what happens. Hopefully it should peel away because it's very similar to the other window film that has peeled away okay and there's been no issues so that's what we're going for so i mixed up 300 ml worth of resin and that's now sitting because that's got a 30 to 40 minute waiting time working time and we don't want to pour it until it's going slightly warm so i'm just going to keep feeling my resin just to see how it is i will pre-measure it out so that'll save some time now new to me is this resin chameleon glitter and this one is Labradite. And I am wondering if I was to paint some of this directly onto here, because I know not everything's got iridescent, is that going to give it all an ir iridescent look? So I'm curious. So it may add value, it may not, but it's got like a slight purple tinge to it, pink, which should go nicely, I feel, with these uh, patterns that we're going to be using. So I'm just going to loosely dust some on. I don't know whether to do it on one and not do it on the other to see if that's going to add value. So we'll we'll go rogue and we'll um, wing it there. So I am going to add into my resin the Super Sparkle. So this is from Petra and her pigments. 
and this one is the sparkle white so that hopefully will give a natural little shimmer so they're really just embellishments rather than well <laughs> Ah, oh, you got some we we think alike, girlfriend, don't we? Um, so the white I'm going to be using is the Star White Shimmer. And that's just a soft white. Hopefully it'll give a contrasting effect to the pigment paste. I don't normally use it. I usually use Casting Craft, but we'll see how that go. And I've talked to you about this silver I'm going to be using. That's from Petra's uh, Pigments. So that gives that hopefully nice contrast to the to the pink. Originally, I was just going to do the baby pink, as I call it, whereas this is called a pale lilac uh, with the silver, because I just keep seeing that a lot as I'm walking around. I keep thinking that's a beautiful colour combination to work with. But I thought I'd add a couple more shades of the pink. And then New Heat White Changing my I've got a couple of them. Uh, we'll see how we uh, we'll we'll go, uh, Paula. I've got I think I bought six of them, uh, and we'll see. So this is the color scheme I'm going to use with a little bit of silver, a little bit of white, and then these are just the embellishment parts. So what I'm going to do to start with is just add a little bit of the sparkle white within to my resin. Just mix that through. Don't want to go overboard with it, but hopefully it will just add a nice little bit of contrast if the light hits it or. If you put a candle in there if that hits it um, and I think with this it's always a little bit of restraint because I'm going to be using the silver there'll be a little bit of sparkle in there and because the uh, star white shimmer has a little bit of white uh, sparkle in there um, I want it to be fairly subtle so I can move the sparkle white out of the way if you've not seen Petra she's an amazing artist Pe Petra Youngblood, have I said that right? Paula, put the name up there for me if you could, that would be really helpful. Uh, but she's an amazing artist, but she also makes these pigments as well. <laughs> I am coming over to your side with the colours lately, aren't I? I'm channeling you. <laughs> uh, I'm going to move that one out of the way now and just stir that through. The, the purpose of leaving it to stand is... It is to obviously remove any air bubbles, but I'm not too stressed because we're working, we're not going very thick and we're spreading it out. Uh, some of the air bubbles will come to the top naturally. Uh, but by leaving it in the container, I'm forcing it to heat up a bit quicker, which is going to help me when it comes to sculpture because you really want it to be almost at that stage of setting where you can feel it warm in your hands. And the reason you do that is you have more control. It doesn't go as thin when you prune it onto your substrate got a drip there but that doesn't matter so and uh, um it just makes for a better sculpture uh in my opinion but uh, you know there's so many different people that do amazing sculptures out there um and have their own processes so i think all you need to do is understand how your resin is going to respond understand the response times and different stages and then just create your own processes all right so these are my actual colors so i'm going to get um, my cups out ready I, I do them one either side. You may choose not to do that. It just helps my old brain um, know how I'm going to distribute these colours. Um, you could do just one per side. Uh, I do keep my cups that I use and they are used for... Oh, Petri on board. There you go. Thank you so much, Pet, uh, Petra. <laughs> Paula. <laughs> uh, now, I have... A collaboration coming up with the most amazing wonder um, if Paula I'm so sorry I know that you're working hard today if you could put Wanda's uh, channel description in there so people could go over and take a love and, and, and share the love she's an amazing person artist and a wonderful soul uh, and uh, she's actually really funny as well I spend a lot of time giggling but also enjoying her heart and she takes the time to thank and bless people and send well wishes and mention other people's channels and she's got some fun stuff happening so pop over but I do have a collaboration coming up with her in November and it's going to be a brushwork one uh, so really looking forward to that Wanda's Blessed Creation that's the one uh, so check her out uh, and that'll be early November that that one will be also if you are somebody that has either a art channel on youtube or a facebook group or a art page that you want people to go and visit put your information in the comments now because even though people may not be here 
live watching it they might watch it on replay they might want to choose to go over to your channel and have a look at your work and and see what's happening and if they enjoy your work they might subscribe as well so please put a heart at the side of your name uh, now in the comments and if you do have time please go over and and check people out november the 12th thank you paula <laughs> all righty let me check i've got the right three four five one two three four five one two three four five all right we're all good so i'm going to keep that glitter there to paint around the area where i think my sculpture could go what do you reckon i might do one with one without and see if it really is going to add value yeah i think i'm going to do i think i'm going to paint the chameleon glitter on the right hand side one and leave it clean on the other and then see what value it does add because that's going to really help you uh, decide if that's something you want to do and i am now going to distribute my colors in these little cups because that gives me a chance to chat with you whilst my resin is going uh setting should i say not going off um and i'd love to know what you've all been up to oh what projects you've been working on what's your week been like for you i am working on a couple of commissions behind the scenes so i've had to put all my focus on that and channel all that positive energy um my wedding is fastly approaching. Our trip to Australia is fastly approaching. It's uh, Christmas is approaching for everybody if you do celebrate it. <laughs> it's just a very busy time of year. I don't even know if I'm going to get to do any many Christmas videos um, just so that I, just to fit everything in. So for my amazing members that were, I've just put that into. Um, hibernation just until january just so that i'm not over committing and, and stretching myself out because i am focusing on my own well-being as well uh, but i'm also really enjoying my brushwork at the minute and that really helps quieten my brain relax me and i i just really enjoy growing my art skills so if you've not if you only watch me for resin and you've not watched any of my brushwork go over there and have a little look and tell me what you think about that Anyway, I am just trying to evenly distribute my colours and then I'll work on, I say science, I use that loosely, how I want to distribute the colours because I do want the baby pink to have most of the space and I want the other two shades of pink to have maybe just a highlight. I don't want the silver to take over uh, and I don't want the white to take over. So the hero has got to be the, I call it the, the baby pink but it is actually known as pale lilac i'm not affiliated by any of the pigments uh, or resin companies that i share with you it is purely the love of products um i'm just distributing more in my where my pink's gonna be then i couldn't uh, talk and pour at the same time just making sure I've got more of that pink. I want to keep some of this clear back and that's going to be for my edges. I prefer to do that myself because I feel it adds a nice transition from the colours to the crystals and gives you that nice edge, which I feel makes it look more um, glass-like and it, it really helps the crystals pop. I don't know, Paula, why I'm only seeing your comments. Has nobody seen your comment? Let me see what's going on. Let me have a little look. See if there's anything I can do. Oh. Um, let me have a little look. I don't know. Is anybody else seeing Paula's comments? Can you just respond to me and let me know that, please? Anybody that can hear me, are you able to see Paula's comments? I'll wait to see if people can catch up with that. Uh, somebody did respond to you there oh yeah all right so okay so you, everybody can see your comments i can see your comment paula but just on my phone not on my ipad so if i'm glancing down at my work and i miss one of your comments my lady please um accept my apologies <laughs> i'm making your grandniece's names and some christmas decorations and yes you can see them wonderful thank you for that feedback so I'm going to have my pale pink there. Then I'm going to see about my fuchsia magenta. I think that might be a little bit too much white silver. They balance them out. So, oh, 
Yeah, I'm gonna. Oh, oh, the decisions, decisions. No, I'm gonna leave that as it is. Can you hear me talking out loud? Can't. Well, thinking out loud. Ooh! Oh no. Resin spill. That's not great, is it? <laughs> All right. I'm not gonna worry about that because my jewels can go over that, and it will connect with that. Um, I know you can't see 100% the whole of this, but I've given you the best view you can and I will work with that. What I am going to do now is start to add in my pigments into these cups already. And I'm going to open up my silver, which is the Twinkling Silver Star. And from last time I used it, I remember this has a very nice, um, almost like floating aluminium silver. It is a lush colour absolutely lush now with these pigments that are your golds or your silvers that float to the top they can also take over your artwork if you had add not had a lot of heat to them so when you do use these or you do apply these I recommend that you add them towards the end or try not to put too much heat in that area or you will find that it could take over and, and you lose control of the shape or it could bleed into many, many other uh, pigments. Just going to check that it's quite subtle. Quite like that. Because I'm wanting the hero to be that light pink, I don't want the other colours to be too harsh. So I'm applying them quite more liberal than I would do normally. Hello, Miss Julie Madison Artpreneur. It's been a while, my lovely. It's lovely to see your presence and everybody else in here. Uh, I hope you're well. You must be up exceptionally early uh, for America, are you? All right, I'll contemplate if I want to add some more on that because it is very, very transparent. Hello, Herb. Welcome. Thank you all for joining my spontaneous live. I like to keep Paula on her toes. Next, I am going to add my star white shimmer. So I think the white I'm going to pull back on. So I'm just going to push a little bit of that resin back into where the baby pink will be. I'm going to do that for the other one, which will help because I spilt some of that. I'm hoping I'm just amusing you all. <laughs> just have a little look so this one is the color cottage pigment and it's star white shimmer color cottage have amazing pigments i know they're not necessarily readily available in the uk but they do ship all over the world uh, but their pigments are beautiful and they always have this nice um, shimmer in them so if you love a little bit of that shimmer uh, color cottage pigments Available in America and they do ship all over the world. Oh, insomnia, bless you. <laughs> Is this when you normally go into your art room, Jules, and, and get super creative? Okay, so this is a nice white. It's not like a bright white like the casting craft is, and that's why I chose to go with it. It's got that pearly look to it. You may not be able to see it in there, but... I think that's going to go lovely against the uh, softness of this silver that's in there as well. Now, I tend to do my sculptures with transparent pigments. Oh, I just pressed my knee so far back it hurt. <laughs> I'm having real problems with my knees and I've been really struggling stretching my knee out and standing and that just felt like it cracked and went back the way it's not meant to go. I hope I never moan too much in the camera there. So sorry. I'm trying to work through the pain. <laughs> oh, far out that hurt. Yes, I usually work with transparent pigments because I just like the light reflecting through when you have a sculpture. Um, it's, a, it's a personal choice. Some of the opaque colours in sculptures that I've seen other people do are just luscious because they they just pop so beautifully. Um, but it's just personal choice. Oh, my knee is very sore. I hope I've just not dislocated it. It's my age, Paula. Yes. How did I happen to just log in and see that comment at the right time, eh? 
<laughs> I'm going to go with the pale lilac, the one that I want the most of, because I want to mix it up, see that colour, and then make an informed decision of whether... Oh, I've not opened it yet. That's how new this one is. Uh, and see... if I've got the balance right with the other colours before I commit because I really originally was just imagining that was a lot of words just to say this is the colour I've been dreaming of which has been um, baby pink and, and silver um, and apologies resonate if you watch this you call it a pale lilac which I suppose it is but I see a beautiful pink as well I think that is lovely. With the, I don't know if you're going to be able to see, I'm going to, I'll spill them, but the pink and the silver should look lovely in that white. I'm just cleaning off my stick in between applying each of these pigments so that I'm reducing the amount of cleaning up I have to do because that's my love hate relationship with resin. I hate the sticky mess and I hate cleaning up after myself. Okay, so we've got about that much. So I just basically dip, dip my stick in, swivel it around until all the excess comes off and then just leave what's on there. So I think I'm quite happy with the, with the amount of colour. Oh, I think my Neil's going to start having his disco downstairs. He's probably forgot I'm on a live. You might start hearing him sing soon. I love transparent pigments because you can always build on them. Yeah. I have to agree. I have to, uh, let me know if you can hear Neil's music so I'll have to shut the door. Don't want to get in trouble by YouTube. Okay, so we've got those. Now I'm going to try to just get even less pigment on my stick for this one to try and control a little bit. So this is the uh, bright pink. I suppose this is where you'll see that that other colour is definitely a light lilac compared to this pink. So I'm, I, you may not be able to see in the camera, but I am pulling off some of that pigment. So I've only got half of it now that was. Oh, oh, that's nice. <laughs> I'm being bold. I'm going all girly today, aren't I? Pink and silver. That's nice. You can definitely, when you put those at the side of each other, you can definitely see that is a lilac. <laughs> I take it back, Resonate. You named it well. Okay, so that's that one. And all the time I'm chatting with you when we're mixing these colours, that resin's setting a little bit, so it's going to respond way better for me as we start to pour it. I'm going to shut my door because I'm hearing that music getting louder as Neil's starting to sing and maybe dance. All right. And then we have the final pigment, which is that fuchsia. I think in this colour scheme is going to work lovely together. It's just now how I how I blob it <laughs> and then obviously come in with my swirls which I'll do and then the final colour is that fuchsia pink not too sure if you can see you can see those colours can't you and we're on our final colour which is the fuchsia again just going to dab it in and take off half of what was on there oh I put that in my white. Oh no, a disaster. <laughs> so the white is now going to be an even lighter pink. Uh, maybe that's a happy little accident that um, was meant to be. We'll see. <laughs> okay, we can work with it. Let me take that out, brush the excess off here and then see what I've done to that white. The only thing then is I've got to try and replicate it off of the other side. Oh. It's quite a nice colour. 
Oh, it's like a pearl, pearl soft baby pink. I quite like that. What I might do though is, um, I'm gonna half that color and half that color. So I'll get a little bit of that baby white and the pink and the other, but I will add my fuchsia to this. I am, if you are in UK, or maybe not in the UK, but you are enjoying uh, Strictly Dancing. Uh, we got Stacy in here. Hello. Good morning. <laughs> you kitty woke you up and you're very annoyed until you saw my live. Yay. <laughs> I think that your kitty was telepathic and telling you to come in here and hang out with us. That's what I reckon. All right. So the colours are mixed up. One I incorrectly mixed up. But what we will do is we will work on that because that's what the resin gods have given us today. Our own unique colour. And... Um... <laughs> Half and half, so I'm getting the same colours in each. So we have very little white. That does concern me a little bit, but you know what? It's just going to be all pink, isn't it? Instead of all white. All right, have I distributed my colours? Yes, so I could make a decision to add a little bit more um, white in here, which I think I may do, but I'm, I'm mindful of the balance of how much pigment I'm going to be adding versus uh, resin, but powder is a lot more forgiving um, than pigment paste. So I've just added a tiny little bit more of the white. I don't think it's going to do much to it. I think I'm stuck with a colour, although it is a very nice colour. I reckon you should make your own colours, add a bit of this pigment, add a bit of that. There's just not going to be very much of this because it's a very small amount that I had. I do have clear around the edge there. Uh, I could sacrifice some of that for my white, but I think I would prefer to have some of the clear going around the edge rather than the white. And hopefully there's enough uh, silver in there to contrast it and everything like that. So our colours are mixed up. I'm now going to just put my colours to one side and I'm going to dust on my um, chameleon glitter onto one of these here just to see what value that adds, if any. Oh, Paula, just sent a hi from the kid. Oh, Stacey, that's lovely. All right, I am, oh my word, lingo bingo. I'm just going to pull my pigments off camera a little bit just to help me when I start to pour them um, to keep everything in the order I want and try not to make too many mistakes. I'm going to shift my bling out of the way until it is time to bling it up just to get myself a little organised and try and get these in a similar order. If when I print it on I'm thinking, whoa, it is too pink and I need white, I might have to sacrifice my clear edge for the white, but... So far, I'm going to stick with it and we are going to see how that goes. All right, so this is the one where I spilt my resin a little bit. And this is, so I've just got to avoid that area here. So I will work with that when it's time to put it in, but I'm going to get a brush and I'm just going to loosely put on this chameleon. Just going to pour it loosely on here and brush it and see if it's going to add some value. Now, I know you're probably meant to put these in moulds, but I like to live a little dangerously. I'm just curious, is it going to add any value or not? I know there's a tiny little bit of iridescent on here. I don't even know if, when I pour my resin on, if it's going to cover where this is, but maybe it will. I know that roughly this centre will all have resin in it. I'm not going to put anything on this side because I want to see how this responds differently and I'm just trying to really brush it in. So 
so this is from Resinate. They've got a whole range that's just come out and uh, I ordered, I think everything. I think Paula says she has as well. Uh, and just curious. I might find that this particular uh, brocaded window pattern would have looked better just au naturel. And that's why I'm just doing it on one and not the other. I'm going to have to keep bending down, aren't I, to see if I've um, covered most of it. It's going to be really annoying if it looks really nice and I've missed a patch out. I'm like, showing. If only you took your time. And I said, well, we're just learning, aren't we? So I had a full-on conversation with myself just then, didn't I? Has anybody started to think about Christmas if they celebrate it? Not necessarily uh, from a craft point of view, unless that's what you're doing for your presents for people. I'd love to know how you all are. I want to know what the weather's like over in um, Las Vegas currently. And what will it be like for me in, uh, wow, is it six weeks now uh, when I'm going to be there? Uh, let me have a little look what's been said sorry paula i'm just looking so if i've missed your comment um sharon what are you going to say about strictly come dancing oh oh i've fallen in love with it i am tonight i'm going to be sat down there and it's probably the most diverse show that i've seen and there is two males dancing in this one and oh my god they are my favorite it just looks so hot um the dancers that uh, they do because they're just such amazing dancers the timing and everything and um, it just looks like you're going to watch an actual show rather than them uh, one of them uh, being a contestant and learning uh, but yeah I'm uh, I'm gay it's my first season I've ever watched and I'm like right I'm after to watch the back catalogue now because I, I just really enjoy it it's one of those where you snuggle up on the settee get a cup of tea have a little bit of chocolate Maybe a little bit of crisps and uh, watch that show. Uh, has anybody else been watching it? That's what I was going to say. Thank you for the prompt. <laughs> I do go off in uh, not finishing my sentences. I can almost see a nice lilac-y um, shimmer or amethyst shimmer all over this now. So I think that's going to be, I reckon, I think that should cover where the resin is going to go. I don't want to put too much on. She says, still applying it. Step away, Sharon, step away. But I do want to make sure a big enough section of this has got it covered. And it'd be quite interesting if I go a little bit further than I would do normally. Not that I know it, where the resin's going to go. But if I can capture some of the edges where the crystals will be, how is that going to look? And I'm curious to know as well. Hello, Zeus, are you coming in? If this stops the iridescent... Um, coming through that's already on this film which is very little but the most important part about this uh, window film that I'm using is I want to see if this lovely brocaded pattern is going to come off and add value to the sculpture okay so I've lightly dusted that uh, oh I miss your comment Paula I don't know if there's any anything you were saying uh, then I'm sure um, oh you're hooked on Strictly yes they are amazing yes they are <laughs> Hello, Andrew from Sydney. I hope you can hear me today. I hope you're well and I hope you've got some freedom over there. And what I mean by that is COVID. <laughs> okay, I feel what I'm going to do is just pop a little bit of resin down. It doesn't feel like it's warming up yet, but the way I test it is if I put a little bit down, I want to see how much it's going to move and how quickly and how much it's going to lose, uh, leave its um, edge because that's an indication to me that it's um, going to be ready to start pouring. How long has this live been going? 34 minutes. So we are getting to the time. It said between 30 to 40 minutes working time. It's the first time I've worked with this resin. It's sheer craft resin. It could suddenly go uh, and, and cure. So that's, I'm just being mindful, but currently it's not moving too far. It is getting a little bit thin there, but then again, that was the edge. It's still holding it there. So I reckon five more minutes and we'll be good to pour. Yes, the C word, the awful C word. 
Um, what I am going to do is just give it a couple more minutes and then we'll be good to go. And then it'll be really quick. And I'm just going to be really sort of random where I pop it. You could do it uh, in a precise movement if that's what you enjoy. But because I come in and add my swirls, which is an optional extra that I like to do so that when you fold in it, I think it adds value that way because it's more random. And you also create colours or patterns within each other. Um, it, it's all a personal choice. There is no right or wrong for this. Let your imagination go. The only thing that is a choice is um, the timing of your resin when you pour it, where you have to get it at the right time for it to be better for you. Now, this is still spreading. That's um, that's why you can tell that it's not quite ready. I mean, I think it's trial and error on what you prefer. If it goes too thin, it's going to keep spreading when it comes time to... Um, folding it over things or getting that um, shape that you want, it's going to make it more likely where it's going to crack. It's a great show to sit and chill out. And there's comedy couples as well. I know. <laughs> there, there's so is. It's just my favourite show at the minute. It just makes me happy. And I've been listening to some of the music they've been dancing to, which I absolutely love because they're dancing to their own choice of music and modern music. And I'm like, oh, I've not heard of that before. Or, or, oh, I really like that song, but I don't know who it is. And I found my new addiction. Um, and he's been around for ages. You probably all know it, and you're like, Sharon, that is so last year. Uh, but the band Years and Years. Um, and I've been listening to that his music, and I've just been listening to it all week. It just makes me so happy. Such happy tunes. Uh, and a, a great artist, I think. Anyway, I'm trying to fill time because there's nothing more I can do at this stage other than chat to you all, interact with you all, ask questions. You're just looking at this and thinking, well, what's going on here? <laughs> I'm just waiting for the perfect time to um, start to do my raising. I'm feeling it to see when it's starting to go off. And what I mean by that is heat up. I'm starting to feel a little bit of heat in there now. I just don't want to do it too early. It'll be This one will be too early. That one will just be right. <laughs> um, but once we start pouring it down it's not going to take too long and then I've got to work out where do I want my silver so you've got to remember the part I'm working on here is going to be the outer edge because when I fold it over so you have to try and think reverse up so if I want some silver showing and I put it on top it might only come at the edge, but it might not come on the underneath. So you want to think about your composition of what colours do you want to see from the inside and from the outside. Uh, and a lot of that is trial and error as well. <clears throat> but it is something to think about. Anyway, I think I might start uh, pouring because I'm feeling the heat. And I've, it's been mixed now for 40 minutes, just under, because I did it for four minutes before we got on here. And this has been going 38 minutes. So I just want to make sure that it's not suddenly going to go off. Now I enjoy swirling these a little bit of late. And I think that just adds a little bit of value, I feel, when, it, um, when I add my swirls. But I don't want them to necessarily be... symmetrical but I also need to make sure I've left myself enough resin to fill in the gaps it's going to be one of these resins I feel where it's suddenly going to go it's suddenly going to go and I won't be able to work with it I can feel it heating up now maybe I need to add a little bit of silver in between those colours And if you do overcommit with a colour and you don't like, um, you want to break it down and have like darker colours in there and you've already committed with your colours, you can always use these two for different um, sculptures. You could just have one layer, you could have two layers, or you could come and add a different layer. This is the silver I'm just adding down. can see now that it's definitely going to be a lot harsher colour than I had in my mind that I would like. 
but maybe it's going to be bright and happy as well. Just trying to make sure there's a little bit of silver that's going to go throughout this design. Just making sure it's weave, weaved in. Is that even a word? Yeah. So apologies, I'm not going to be able to see your comments at this stage. I'm just going to have to keep filling, filling my sculpture. Then I will come back and look at comments. We have wonderful people in this chat that can answer hopefully any questions that you've got. Or I will come back and read the comments later. Oh well, it really is going off. Okay. Sorry if my hand's in the way then. It's very hard to get a good camera angle and also be in control of where it is that you're doing. So this is the colour that I made up myself <laughs> accidentally. Pour it into the white. I really regret not having enough white now. I might have to sacrifice some of my clear. For this just trying to fill the gaps a little bit okay let's see what white I do have looks like a hot mess at the minute In my head, I'm just trying to work out how much I really want to add white as far as sacrificing my clear. But I'm going to hold my nerve at the minute and then just see what happens when I swirl. looking for the gaps because it's got such a uh, contrasting colour in here I can't see the holes as much as I would do normally you can always bend down and then you can start to see if there's any gaps in there now I'm not bothered if this is mixing the colours together at this stage I'm, by just tapping where there isn't no resin it's going to force the resin to go where um, you're telling it to go I really love that colour I made myself there alright get rid of those okay I might just Start to block the colours a little bit more now. Just keep that bit of baby pink back there. I think this is the downside when you commit to your colours and you mix them up. Um, you, you can tweak them. Such a happy piece though. I always like to drag my cup around and get the last dregs out. But I am mindful that while I'm doing this it's curing in the other cups and I need to be able to use it. I think that one's done now. Yeah around with some more brighter one here or should I say darker ones get your mouth right Sharon apologies my wonderful people that's in here that I am not able to respond to any comments or see what you're saying at this stage I will be back shortly to 
to read them. This looks like some nice rock. Alright, so there's no gaps now. I've got a little bit of that pink left. These are all the bits I normally cut out for you. <laughs> but the benefit of a live, you actually get to see it, what it's really like to do it. Or hopefully if I'm talking out loud about what I'm doing and why, that's adding a bit of value for you. Apologies if my hand keeps getting in front of the camera. And then this just leaves us with a little bit of the... pink to come now. I come and add my white at the end, not white, the clear at the end, just so that it allows the resin to keep spreading if that's what it needs to do. So that when I do add the clear, um, it creates a little bit of an effect, but you've got a bit of control as to where that clear is gonna be. I'm just trying to get all around the edge with the soft pink or the lilac, if I can. Okay, just getting my stick. being drawn to pinks and purples at the minute. Alright, I'll leave that as it is now. We're going to move on to the other one. I think that light pinks balance that dark out nice, that bit of silver. I'll just quickly go over it with my torch. Oh, hello, Alison. How are you? I hope this was a nice surprise for you. It's loosely going over the top. Gonna to let it continue doing what it wants to do now. And now we're gonna come on here. Uh, where are we? So we got Monica in here. Hello, you caught a live. Welcome, Alison. Don't, it's okay, don't you worry. It's just nice for you to come in, say hello. You get on with stuff. Um, uh, yeah, you can't see that too much, can you? Hopefully you'll be able to see this one. I should have angered my camera for you. But, I am going to do a similar thing where we're going to come in. I'm going to maybe go for a little swirl this time. They're not going to look alike, are they? But that's okay. Maybe it's going to, maybe I'm thinking of uh, like um, rock candy when I do this. I, I mix it up a little bit because the, one, it entertains me, but two, I'm looking for different effects. And if the palette is the same palette, even if the pattern's slightly different, uh, they still look like they belong together or they're from the same family. But I think it's a personal choice. You could choose to have them exactly the same. I've left a little bit of gap in between so I can come and add my um, white and silver. Okay, let's have a little look. Coming around with that silver. I'm gonna fill a little bit more in the middle there where there's the holes and then a little bit of white. Sorry if my mouth's right in the uh, microphone there. One day I'll get myself a good system set up. Okay, so just gonna weave a little bit of silver around so that that will come into different effects there. Okay, I'm gonna scrape out what I've got. So 
amazing what you have left in your cups that you don't think you've got. Okay, that's all the silver gone. Move on to a little bit of that white, which is very little. Try and get some around that gap there. I hope that you're enjoying this. If you can't stay the whole time, I totally understand. If you've got any questions, ask away. Even though I'm working on this, I've got wonderful people in the uh, group that will share any knowledge or anything that I've talked about before. I'm just at the stage where I can't really be looking at comments, uh, unfortunately. But I will promise you, I do read back over all the comments either today um during this when i've got a bit of time or at the end so uh every comment is valued but there are amazing people in here that will be able to help as well answer any questions you've got about what i'm doing what i'm using why i'm doing what i'm doing <laughs> um yeah so feel free to interact or just relax and watch the process the only thing is i don't have any tranquil music playing for you Okay, I'm gonna leave the baby pink now. Oh, just I said lilac, I keep calling it baby pink. I'm gonna go to my dark again now. And I need to make sure I've got enough left for it. To go into all the holes, but I do have clear left, so I'll be able to. It really is like a lolly, this one. <laughs> what do you reckon? Swirls or just uh, splat? Get a few more solid bits of colour coming out there. That's that one. I don't think you'll see a lizard. You never know, though. You never know. You might start to see some other things come into light. It's like a surprising delight when you get to see these tiny little things um, creating their own images. It's a very good working time though, this resin. You can see that I've been working now, or this live's been going for what, 50 minutes so? And um, it still has, uh, it's definitely curing, but you still have that little bit of movement. So as far as if you're wanting one that, apologies for Zeus, that has a long working time, this is definitely one that you could consider. He's trying to be all brave, Zeus, but um, <laughs> if, he went, if he went outside to see whoever's annoying him, he'd, uh, he'd get very nervous. Okay, leave a little bit of that. Going in now with this soft pink that I created. But I need to fill my gaps in now. And if I have any gaps left, I've got my clear that I'm going to bring in. I'm going to try and start closing the gaps now. So that will create some natural effects in itself. But I don't want there to be any holes in my sculpture before we even start sculpting. That just wouldn't do. Bend down soon and make sure it's uh, all leveled. Sorry, I'm trying to talk, but I'm like getting lost into the process. I hope that you understand. I 
Has anybody been to see James Bond? I'm thinking of going and watching it at the movie. Now, I just want to know if you have seen it at the movie, was it worth going to the movie and watch it? With it being his last one, I really feel like uh, it's worth going. And I've been hearing some good comments about it at work. They've not been giving away much of the plot line or anything, but they have said it is worth going to see it. Uh, but I just want to know if you've watched it. Okay, I've still got some little holes. are. I think that's all covered in. Okay. Some baby pink left. We've got the clear, we've got the swirls, we've got the crystals. Okay. All right, one little blast over with the gun to get rid of the bubbles very lightly. And I just Definitely need to check there's no bits in here. Should I say bits? Holes. There are no holes. So that all looks good. So I'm now going to go around with a clear. Now this is really hot in my hand. So I just have to go lightly around. Make sure I get it around everywhere. And that there is enough for both pieces. So I just go lightly to start with around it, let it meet up. I usually pull it a little bit away from the piece. And then go around the other then. If I need to add more, I will, because this will be where the crystals will attach to. Got enough now to go around and just fill in the gaps and then I'll use some around the edge to go in not from around the edge I'll use some that I've got left to go around the middle to hopefully create some natural effects as well and I've just got to remember to fix up this part that I spilled otherwise that's going to drag the crystals out so I've just pulled that in to the rest of that resin. Stick's gonna be really sticky now, so I'll have to get rid of that one. And I'm just gonna go back around this piece now and close the gaps of the clear to the color. Just a few little gaps there. That should be all right because we've just added that long bit there. Just wanna make sure there's a decent clear edge around otherwise all the crystals or table scatterings will go into the color and although they still look nice i don't think they look as nice as when it's the clear that embodies them or embraces them but that is a personal choice it's not because that's what you should do it's just what i prefer to do all right this is really thickening up so I'm just going to get my stick to pull out the remaining bit of resin that's in there and then I'm going to stick it upside down to get rid of the excess so it's easier to pull out really thick like treacle so this is about your maximum working time so um, I'd say that you've got a good hour with this uh, resin all right happy that my edges have got enough around now there's more on the the rock candy one than there is this one but there's still enough i'm just gonna 
try and swirl a little bit in the middle just to help with some effects again it's an optional piece you don't have to do that but when you add that clear it pushes some of the pigment down and you get that um, a nice contrast in my opinion but it is so sticky it is so sticky at the minute try a little bit here And then I'll do my swirls, add the crystals and then torch it one last time. The reason I wait until I've done the swirls to the torch is because it creates a few bubbles. All right, I can't work with that anymore. So I am just going to uptick that now and let it all drain out so that I can use it for the next project. All right, that's got to go. Okay, so swirl it is. I need to swirl now because if I don't, it's going to be too hard to swirl it as it. I usually start at the edge. You can do whatever you want to do. You can hear it pushing on there. Be interested to see how it adheres. And I go around it twice because then it creates uh, another layer of blending. Listen at that. Oh my god, that really does look like uh, candy in some of those spots now. Okay, let that settle. Clear my stick and I'll go on to the next one. Uh, I do ship sculptures over the pond. I've uh, sold quite a few to America. Uh, believe it or not, Stacey, the hardest thing with sculptures is the size of the box that they need to send. They're not necessarily heavy. All my sculptures, by a one, have successfully been transported and not been damaged. But this poor lady, we sent her a second one and still had the same issues. So I reckon it must be the couriers over there were just chucking, chucking them over. There's some natural bleeding happening in those white edges. So I feel on this one, the white edges will disappear and it's going to be mainly colour showing through. The hard thing with this part, and it's not really hard, is you think about the muddying or loss of colour. Depending on what colours you use, you're not really going to get muddying, but you might lose some of your tones or anything like that. Um, but... Looks like a little bit of a hot mess from what you're seeing. <laughs> ah. All right, let me, I'm going to come back round now and swirl one last time. I'm going to go in reverse now, I think. I'm going to start at the middle and go out. Just gives more movement for me on the second swirl around and these movements may not look the great when they're down here but when you put them onto the sculpting stage and you start pleating it and everything like that that's when i think you see um a lot more beauty in them now because this is opaque you're not really going to see through it as much and that's the beauty of the transparent ones versus the opaque. But I wanted these to be bright, happy. Okay, so I'm going to leave that one as that one is. And we'll see. I don't think it's necessarily going to be for everybody. <laughs> but I am enjoying it. And we'll see. Does it, is it, is it going to add value? I think the most important thing for this is going to be for me is seeing what this um, window film does to it. Is it adding value? I think in my mind's eye, it's not come out the colours I would have liked because we messed up with a white. So I think next time it'd be interesting to see if I just stick to the two colours, the pink and the silver, what will that look like? But when you add the darker colours, what that does do is give you depth.
All right, I am going to get my torch out, get rid of all the bubbles, and we're going to add the uh, bling. We are out of our working time now for this. I am enjoying the vibes on it. It's funky. Almost looks like a doily. Does anybody know what a doily is? All right. I think I've got rid of all the big bubbles. The reason I just need to get rid of the big bubbles is so it doesn't pop and leave a hole, um, which is going to frustrate for the... It is an eaten mess. I think that's what I'm going to call it. Yeah, I can't. I, there's no worries, Stacey. I'm going to upload all my sculptures to Etsy. Um, so people can choose from what I've already done. I'm not necessarily doing custom made ones this time of Christmas because I won't be able to fit everything in. But if I do no colour schemes, I can try and fit them into my sculptures Saturdays. And then if you like it, you obviously, um, you go and you buy it. I've just got to damn dial um, because of the wedding and everything like that I'm very limited for time and hence why I had to pause my membership so I just come in with my um, beads and I go right at the edge of where the clear is although there's not much clear left and I over overestimate what I need just so that if the resin continues to creep forward it's going to have some bling to grab hold of. Now, because it is firming up quite quickly, I do need to push it into the edge because you almost want to break the seal of that edge. Uh, so there's a balance, but you do have to push it up to make sure it's going to make contact with the resin and then push it into it uh, to force it to keep moving forward a little bit. So it always looks like I put a lot on. I do. It's because I never know how far the resin is going to creep forward and it's easier to over um, commit with the bead and then collect them and, and reuse them again later than not put enough on it and then think, oh dear, I wish I had. I wish I'd put more on there. Now this is the one where it um, spilled out a little bit there so I'm going to have to work with that. Push that around. Now there's nothing... Nothing I enjoy more, and I'm joking here, you know, than, than picking up all these beads at the end. But um, I find that I have the best results doing it this way and taking off the excess once it's cured than not putting enough on it and then thinking, well, I've just got a, a clean edge there. There's no crystals there. I think this one definitely is going to be called Eat and Mess. But you watch it, by the time we sculpt it, and then we add uh, the candle middle to it, it's going to look lush, I say. All right, just pushing that all in. Now, as I've not worked with this one before, I'm just going to uh, set my timer from four hours from when I walk away from it to come back and see if it's ready for sculpting because there is a fine line between it needing to be firm but pliable to um, it breaking because it's uh, and it not bending because you're not getting your shape because you're doing it too late. All right, that's number one. Hope that all made sense. Be interested to see what this one's like um, when it comes off and I see the inside colour, what that pattern's like on the inside versus the outside. It looks like more most of the silver has uh, gone to the bottom. And it's also going to be interesting to see what that iridescent um, powder from Resonate. Now, the blue you can see under... Oh, you can't see. It's not in your camera. It's on my white board underneath, not the substrate. Sorry, I should go up here where you can see me. And then... 
that's this stage done for the day. Now, pink might not be your colour. That's okay. I just like to mix it up. But I think that just you seeing the process of what it is that I'm doing and why, or the ability to interact with me is what today's all about. And also share this window film that I'm using. I've not used this one before. See if it adds any pattern to it. If it does add some pattern, then it's about, ooh, is the pattern going to be on the inside or the outside? And I'm not going to be able to tell that until it's time to peel it off. So I think that I have gone around on my edge now. I've made sure that my beads, the bling is connecting with the resin, just pushing it in a little bit. I've got a nice edge so that if it does continue moving, it should have something to cling onto. And I am forcing it into that resin edge so that it does. Now, if you if yours was still a little bit more runny, you'd sort of stay with it until it's more or less, you know that you've got a dam of beads around it and it's holding it and that the resin's not going to come beyond it. So I believe for this particular sitting, we are done. So apologies that I've not been able to read your comments as we were going for the latter part. Uh, I just want to say thank you so much for all your, so, your flamingo. <laughs> Oh, the one on the uh, left seems more pink peacock in the middle with feather swirling around them. <laughs> yeah. Well, it'll take a whole different shape when we come and start sculpturing them. But this one reminds me of Eaton Mess only because of I just think of uh, marshmallows now or uh, jam and also a little bit of that meringue. <laughs> Anyway, I'm going to be logging off for now. If you want to see the next stage, it may be around four hours. I say maybe because I can't do it until it's ready. Uh, but I, you can always either come back and see when I'm on live and put notification on. Or you can uh, watch it on Backplay later uh, and see how this goes to the end. Because I've not used this resin before for sculpting. So it's going to be interesting to see how this resin respond. It's going to be interesting to see how the um, window film responds. And it's going to be interesting to see how the Labradite Chameleon Glitter works. Because I painted it on that board there. Not that board. So we'll see if there's a difference. And it'll also be interesting to see if the little bit of iridescent that's on this window film is going to pull off as well with it. Anyway. Reminds me of a bird we have called Galar in the pink feathers and grey feathers. There you go. It takes people to different places. All right. It is time for me now to go tidy up, get out of this room, go in the fresh air for a little bit and uh, pack away and spend some time doing some housework. But thank you all so much for joining me on Sculpture Saturday live this week. A rare treat. I won't be able to do it next week. Uh, but I really appreciate it. And hopefully... We will see you back uh, for stage two. Have an amazing Saturday. Thank you so much, Paula, for all your work and keeping up comments. And 